Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about some sequences of real numbers and their properties. We're going to be talking about infinite sequences of real numbers and they're going to have the following form. So let's have a quick look at the notation we're going to use. We'll be working with sequences that go x1, x2, x3, so they're always starting from term x1. All of the xn are real numbers and sometimes we'll want a short notation for that, so I'll just write it by xn in brackets. So let's start by looking at some of the questions we can ask about sequences of real numbers. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about these properties which are discussed in more detail elsewhere, but here are some questions we can ask about sequences of real numbers. First question, is the sequence xn convergent? If it isn't convergent then we'll say it's divergent, that's the opposite of convergent. Another question we could ask is, is the sequence xn bounded? Again, if it's not bounded, that means it's unbounded. And finally, is the sequence monotone? And if it isn't, then we'll just say it's not monotone. So now let's look at some examples of sequences and which properties they have. So here's our first sequence, the sequence where xn equals n for all n. Let's see what this sequence does. So here are the first few values, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And we can draw this on the number line, and diagrammatically here we are, and I'll just show you where the sequence goes. It starts at 1, then off it goes to 2, 3, 4, and it keeps on going. Off it goes to the right, heading off towards plus infinity. So let's look at our questions then about this sequence, the sequence where xn equals n. It's a sequence convergent. No, this is a divergent sequence, which just means it doesn't converge. This is because we don't allow infinite limits when we're talking about convergent. Of course, this sequence is heading off towards plus infinity, but that doesn't count as a convergent sequence of real numbers. Is a sequence bounded? Again, for essentially the same reason, it heads off to the right with no bound on it, so it's not bounded, it's unbounded. Finally, is the sequence xn monotone? That means all of the terms go in the same direction. In this case, it's a strictly increasing sequence. Each term is strictly greater than the term before, so the answer is yes, it's a strictly increasing sequence. Let's look at the sequence where xn equals 1 over n. Here are the first few terms of this sequence. So the sequence goes 1, a half, a third, a quarter, and so on. And we can see that on the number line as well. Starts at 1, goes to a half, to a third, to a quarter, a fifth next, and so on. You can see, getting closer and closer to naught, each term strictly less than the one before. So let's summarise the properties of this sequence. Is this sequence convergent? Yes. In this case, the sequence converges to zero. xn tends to zero as n tends to infinity. Is the sequence bounded? Yes, because the modulus of xn is always less than or equal to one. And is it monotone? Yes. This time it's a strictly decreasing sequence. Because each term is strictly less than the one before. Let's look at the sequence where xn is minus 1 to the n. This time the sequence doesn't do very much, it just oscillates backwards and forwards between minus 1 and 1, with the first term being minus 1. So if I was to show you what this sequence did on the number line, I'd just be going backwards and forwards between minus 1 and 1. But it's certainly not convergent. So is the sequence convergent? No. And any sequence that is not convergent is divergent. Even though it doesn't head off to either infinity, it's still divergent. Is the sequence bounded? Yes, it's bounded because, again, the modulus of xn is always less than or equal to 1. 
And is this sequence monotone? Well, no, because the terms get, well, bigger and then smaller and then bigger and then smaller. The sequence oscillates. Let's have a look at the sequence where xn is minus a half, in brackets, raised to the power n. This time it may not be quite so obvious what the sequence is going to do. So let's have a look on the number line and again looking at the first few terms of the sequence. So the values of the first few terms, minus a half, that's plus a quarter, minus an eighth, plus a sixteenth. So it keeps swapping from one side of the origin to the other. And if we follow it on the number line, starting at minus a half, heading over to plus a quarter, back to the other side to minus an eighth, that's plus a sixteenth, that's 1 over 32, that's minus 1 over 32, that's plus 1 over 64, and so on. Another way to think about this sequence is it's uh, xn is minus 1 to the n times 1 over 2 to the n. And the distance to 0 halves every time. So is the sequence xn convergent? Yes, and it converges to 0 rather fast. Is the sequence bounded? Again, yes. And this time, um, the modulus of xn is actually less or equal to a half for all n. Is the sequence monotone? No. We can see it's swapping from one side of the origin to the other. And so, again, the terms will get bigger and then smaller and then bigger and then smaller. But it's not exactly the usual kind of oscillation because it is a convergent sequence. So we've looked at a few examples of sequences. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that the more examples of sequences you look at and the more examples of their properties you examine, the better you're going to understand the concepts of these properties and the definitions. And the more examples you'll have at your fingertips if you want to answer questions. So you should look at some more examples yourselves. Here are a few you could look at. You could look at minus 2 raised to the power n, n divided by n plus 1, sine of n pi divided by 2. But that's just a few more, so why don't you think up a few for yourselves? Write down any formula you like that gives your sequence and see what the sequence does. So have fun looking at some sequences.